Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Davine and today I'm going to be making one of my favorite videos that I love to watch other homeschool moms make and that is curriculum and what they're using and actually how things are going. So today I'm going to be covering my third and fourth grade boys. I'm putting them together because they are actually at a very similar level and they use a lot of the same curriculum, but I'll show you how I adjust based on their needs. And so I hope you can stick around for that. This week is our 12th week of our homeschool and that's the end of our term. We do three 12 week terms. And so it's kind of the end where end of the first term where we just kind of evaluate how things are going. And so I thought it'd be the perfect time to get on here and show you what we're doing and let you know how it's going and kind of give a review of the curriculum and how we feel about it so far. So please, um, before I go any further, I wanna talk about why I grouped my two boys together for third and fourth grade. So my two boys are actually only six months apart. Um, they're both adopted, so that's why, but they're six months apart. And my youngest, he has autism, and my oldest had an IEP when he was in the public school, just learns a little more slowly. So they're actually doing very similar things in some ways, my older one can handle doing a little more work, but my younger one picks things up more quickly. So that's why they're grouped together. So they're both doing teaching textbooks, math three this year as their main math curriculum. So how, these, how this is going so far for me, um, for them, I am unsure on if I'm gonna do this next year. With my youngest, I really struggle with trying to get him to write down the problems on paper. He tries to do it all in his head and having it on here, they have a scratch pad, but when he uses a scratch pad, it doesn't work very well. And then he'll get the answer wrong and he gets really frustrated, but he won't write down <laughs> with a piece of paper the answer. So for him, it's kind of frustrating. We'll probably finish the year with this, but I might not be continuing with him next year. I guess we'll see how things go. For my fourth grader who's doing this, he does a little better. He, he doesn't resist taking out a piece of paper to write down the questions. So it's actually working better for him. So I think that's one thing you need to keep in mind if you are thinking of using teaching textbooks. A lot of people use it and it's great because it does teach your child the lesson and then it has a lot of review built in and it doesn't, it shouldn't take too long in general. Sometimes it does take longer, but in general it's working. I'm just not sure on if my younger son can handle the, yeah, he wants to do it all online and he can't do it all online and he doesn't want to take a piece of paper to write it down. So maybe a written, just having it in paper will be better for him. So I have another math curriculum that I use with my two boys. Teaching textbooks is a very spiral curriculum. So what happens is they'll teach a concept and then they'll do a few questions on that concept, but then the rest of it will be review. And then they'll teach another concept and the concepts do build on each other, but they won't stick in one specific theme for a long time. They just kind of will do a short touch on each different theme and keep rotating in reviews. And then they'll come back to that theme again and add on. So that's spiral. And the other curriculum I use is more of a mastery base because I feel like for my kids, Sometimes they just need a lot more practice in a certain concept before moving on to another one. So in that case, I have Math Mammoth. I purchased the PDF. Um, there was a sale at the beginning of my homeschooling when I started. I think it was grades one to seven and all of it for under $200 for all the PDFs for all those years. And I'm very happy with this purchase. All my kids use Math Mammoth at different points. Sometimes we take a break. What I like about it, it is more mastery. It's still, they still go through like eight or nine units a year in math. So they're still learning all the different concepts each year, but they will focus on one area at a time. Sometimes it can be a little too much review. It does take a long time to get through, I would say, especially since we're using two math curriculums. So for my older daughter, I might skip some questions, but for my boys, it actually works really well to just do it as a review. And I have them actually at grade two level because I would say that with teaching textbooks, if your child is good at math, they're probably gonna be at a higher 
than their grade level. My boys struggle a little bit more, so they're on the third grade level and that's just perfect. Math Mammoth is a little more on the more advanced level, so second grade math for Mammoth works for my third grade boys. And I want it to be not too hard. It's review, it's practice. They're just kind of practicing those concepts, so that works really well for both of my boys. So our main language arts curriculum is Master Books Language Lessons for a Living Education. They're both doing level three. The reason why they're both doing level three is really for, especially my older son, writing is kind of still a challenge for him to get his thoughts onto paper and the fine motor is still a challenge. So I would say at this level, they're still writing about two sentences and they did get up to three sentences. We did this last year. We did look great uh, the level two last year and they did get up to like complete paragraphs but really at two sentences three sentences that's about all he can do right now without being super frustrated so that's kind of the level that we're working on so this is our second year using language lessons for a living education and i was not sure if i wanted to get this level or not it was working i would say it works okay it worked fine I figured I didn't really have a better alternative, so I didn't want to change it. But next year I will be using something different. Well, I've taken out the front pages here. So we take out and we put things in our binders. But the basic setup is day one, you'll have a passage to read or you'll have a picture study and there'll be some questions that they get to answer, answer questions orally. And then they might have, they have a lot of, right now they're doing a lot of writing a story on the next page. And then they have the grammar and I think the grammar it's simple and there's not a lot of repetition or practice, but at this level for my boys, that is fine. Like just kind of touching on the concepts very basically. And that's all they need. I feel at this point, if you follow Charlotte Mason, she generally wouldn't suggest that you start teaching formal grammar until fourth grade anyways. So, I mean, my older son is in fourth grade but I think it's fine to wait another year before we start getting a little more advanced with the grammar. It covers grammar basically. And so I actually like that, that part. On the fourth day of every week, they have this, they have a Bible, a book. Let me go grab that book so I can show you with the book. So they have this book and I believe they use this book for third, fourth and fifth level. So you need the same, just the same book. And I just have one for the two boys. So on that fourth day, what they're doing is they're reading a story out loud to me, and then they're gonna be writing down the verse that goes with the story, so copy work, and then they write a caption from the story and then they get to draw a picture from the story. I find the words in this are very tiny. And I feel like when you're asking kind of younger kids to read, they usually make words a little bit bigger and I find it hard to read myself when I'm reading beside them. Sometimes I have a hard time seeing the words. So I do wish that the words were a little bit bigger, maybe a little bigger book, but that's my only complaint with this. They're good stories, um, good Bible stories. And I do like the copy. I like that they have to do some copy work. It's always good for them to practice. So I like the rest of this, but I find the re listening to them read and the tiny, tiny words in this book make it a ch little bit of a challenge when we come to that day. And they don't love, they don't love doing the copy work. So that makes it just not their favorite day when it comes to language arts. And then the last day is kind of a spelling activity. And in the back of the book, they have tons of spelling games and stuff that you could do with your kids. I don't love to try to plan my own spelling. So for my youngest, who's in third grade, he's actually a really good speller. He'll sound things out and if he gets it wrong, you just tell him the right way and he'll remember the next time. My fourth grader does struggle more with spelling. And last year I was trying to make him, like we were doing spelling tests with these words and it was getting really frustrating for him and for me. <laughs> Even though I feel like the words are super appropriate for their grade level, I mean, for third grade level, he was still struggling so much with it. So I decided this year to pick something else up to help him with that. So my fourth grader, he does, we started this just a few weeks ago. Um, we didn't get it till later in the year, but it has been working really well. So we have been using spelling you see with him. 
Now this is level B, and I think for most people that would mean second grade or first grade even, depending on your child. But that is, it is, I would say this level starts out easy for him, which I is what I wanted. I wanted it to start out easy and not to be too much of a challenge. But as I flipped through and I looked at their book, there's two books, so book A and book B, or part one and part two. When we get to part two, it will definitely become more of a challenge for him. So what we're doing is we're just going through this a little quicker. What I really like about this is we are kind of starting kind of at the beginning. <laughs> so he will read a passage. It's a nursery rhyme and we're clapping to the syllables and we're looking for, and we're really just using some really basic sounds and letters. And really he still needs practice writing. So I'm making sure that I'm watching him write these and that he's forming the letters correctly. And so that's been good. And then he has just this very basic six word spelling test, but it's things that he, sh he knows how to do at this point with the three letter sounds. So it's actually quite simple for him. As we get a little further on, the passages get a little, nah, I wouldn't say that's too much longer, but this is like halfway through the year. And you can see here, he has a lot more words he's gonna have to write. And I know they're gonna slowly work up to that and they're gonna teach the blends. And I think he just needs practice in that. And so really we're just going back and starting, starting at the beginning and hoping that we can just build a solid foundation for him so that spelling, he can, he can hear it better, the spelling. So that's what we're doing for extra spelling for him. All right, both of my boys are doing this. It's the Good and the Beautiful Handwriting Level 3. I got these last year. I purchased a level or two for my kids and we really enjoy them. The boys, my fourth grader who doesn't love writing, he doesn't mind doing it. My third grader who does not like worksheets, he usually doesn't mind doing it. He really actually loves cursive and he has really neat printing. So he doesn't really need the printing part at all, but level three, they start cursive. So we have some printing practice and cursive practice. So I just printed off a few pages because I have these in their binders. I just print off as we need to go, but just very basic, basic cursive writing. And then uh, what they love is there's always some kind of activity down here, like a drawing or a, a drawing or a coloring page. And so they both, they actually enjoy that. Even my fourth grader who doesn't love, he doesn't love to draw or color, but he's actually gotten a lot better over the years at, at being able to replicate. Like it's just his fine motor is a struggle for him. So I really, really do recommend the Good and the Beautiful handwriting. We'll be using those, I think for quite a few years. So I get the PDF for this as well, so I can use it for every child. So you can buy that either hard copy or you can buy the PDF for that. All right, the next thing we do is explode the code. What I like about this, so my Two boys are at two different levels. One just can go faster than the other. One I've been doing, making him do the half levels. You don't have to do the half levels. I didn't know that when I first started, but you could just do, if your child is pretty good at phonics, you could just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If your child needs more practice and it doesn't come naturally, then you can go ahead and get the half levels to give them extra practice. So that's why my fourth graders here is doing He's doing level four and a half. He's just finishing up four. And what I like about this once again is it's just phonics, phonics practice, word practice. If you wanted to use these as spelling words, it would work great actually. If you wanted to just have spelling word lists, they teach concepts, they teach letter combinations, and then they do a bunch of activities. And it's pretty, it's a pretty independent Thing that kids can do in general so that's great it's always good to have a few things like that where they can just do it and get most of it right on their own so i do explode the code with both of my boys so that is what both of my boys do and so my older one the fourth grader does that spelling you see on top and then i got a few things for my younger son who can get through things pretty quickly, but he also has a very low tolerance for worksheets. <laughs> Anything that seems like busy work to him, he will rebel tremendously. So I got a few extra things for him that I thought he could do if he finishes up a little early. So I picked this one up, the Brain Games, Mazes and Coloring Pages, Minecraft, 
We don't actually play Minecraft at my home, but still kids all know about Minecraft. So he loves Minecraft. And so I picked this one up to try to find something that he could do. He likes it well enough. I wouldn't say we get to it very often. It really has, it has some like patterns, which he doesn't seem interested in doing. I haven't seen him do that at all. There's some comic pages where you could fill in your own thing. Coloring pages, which he also doesn't seem to be interested in doing. He's not into coloring. Uh, what he has been doing is he do, he likes these grid pages and then he will draw his own Minecraft creatures or people or whatever. So yeah, so I don't know if that's something you were looking for. If you want coloring pages, you want some puzzles, you want some grids, then I would pick that up. Otherwise, I mean, it's a very thick book. It has a lot of pages, but I don't think we're gonna be using it a whole lot. It's just something that he can grab if he finishes up and he wants something else to do. And then the last thing that I bought for him was a few of these books from Draw the World series. This lady, she also has Draw Europe, Draw Canada, Draw the US. So I purchased this one and I purchased Draw Canada and Draw the US because my youngest son, he is very into maps and globes and countries. Pretty good at art. He really notices detail and he can just draw very intricate things. So he has drawn, like he will free, he can freehand the world. And he did that before I purchased this book, but I thought he might enjoy doing this. So he did. He, probably over two, two or three sessions. It teaches you how to draw the world. So you could do this with all of your students. If you wanted them to practice drawing the world, you would fold a paper a certain way and then she tells you where to start and what to draw and where the gap should be and just leads you kind of through a grid, drawing the world using a grid. So as you can see, you just slowly add, add more and more information. So you could just follow this book and then you'd end up some, you'd end up with all the continents. And then her other books are very similar. So the U.S. is going to have all the the states and stuff like that. So I'm going to pull those out once we get to those for him to use. But he did he did enjoy that. It didn't take him long to do it. He like I said, he already could draw the world pretty much freehand. But I thought it'd just be something fun that he would enjoy. So I almost forgot to mention some supplemental things that my boys are doing as well. So one thing that they're doing this year is keyboarding without tears, level two. I chose level two because they haven't had a lot of experience with keyboarding or typing. And I thought that this was a good level for them to start at after looking at all the examples. So they do enjoy keyboarding. They do enjoy keyboarding without tears. I'd say at this level, it's okay. I would say at the higher levels, I'm not super impressed with it. If I had my choice, I would probably go with typingtutor.com or typingclub.com, no, typing.com or typingclub.com in the higher levels. But for this level, it's fine. It's good practice. It's just basic teaching, teaching the letters. So they enjoy that. And then the second thing that they're doing is also supplemental online. I got them timeformathfacts.com. So if you go to timeformathfacts.com, I got them a subscription for that. I got all my kids that. And what that is, is it's just a way for them to practice addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems in a game format. So it's games and they're just playing games and practicing those. And my kids all, well, three of my kids really need help with getting those math facts really fast. So that's another thing that the boys are both doing. You can choose either addition and subtraction or you can do multiplication and division. So the boys are working on addition and subtraction right now. And honestly, my younger son, he did stop doing that. He was getting really frustrated with it. He, I'm not sure. I thought he would really enjoy it because he seems to want to play games and I thought he would enjoy it, but he, I guess, was getting a little frustrated. There are some parts where it's kind of a math drill type and that's not their favorite, but it's great for them learning how to get those math facts a little faster. However, that being said, he isn't the one who needs it as much. He does catch on to those concepts, the mental math concepts faster. So he's just doing a little extra of the math mammoth. And that was kind of our compromise for that. And finally, my boys both read for 15 minutes on their own silent reading during school 
most days. So they just pick out any book they want and they just read, they just read to themselves for 15 minutes and that's a good time for me to do work with the other students. And they also read out loud to myself or my husband for 10 minutes each night and that is out of their reader. So I choose the books that go along with either our history or just books that are kind of at their level. So they're reading through those as well. So those are a few of the other things that they're working on. I hope that was helpful for you seeing my third and fourth grade boys curriculum and how things are going here. I'm going to be doing my two girls curriculum next, not together, separately. So I have a fifth grader and a sixth grader and so those are the next videos coming up. So please give me a like and please subscribe if you'd like to be notified the next time I put those videos up. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so that YouTube lets you know. One last thing I wanted to let you know about, I have a 40% off sale going on in my Etsy store. In my Etsy store, you will find things like an advent calendar. I have homeschool planners, ed editable and non-editable homeschool planners. I have some of the best selling chore charts on Etsy. So if you are looking for a visual way to show my, your kids what to do each day, I have those there as well. So 40% off from now until the end of the month. So take a look, I have the link below. Mm -hmm.